Good morning and welcome. Good morning. It's about time for us to begin. Before we do, we have a few announcements. Thanks to JC and Joe for speaking last Sunday. And in a few moments, John will have our scripture reading taken from John 6, 66 through 69. So notice that theme. John will be reading from John, chapter 6, verses 66 through 69. Joe will lead our opening prayer. Fred and Paul will lead us through the Lord's Supper Memorial and offer the prayer for giving. And David will lead our closing prayer. Jamie is in the audiovisual booth. And this evening at 5 p.m., we encourage everyone to be back for our worship services this evening. For those joining from home, those services will also be live streamed. And Wednesday at 7 p.m., Dan will present our devotional lesson, and Jerry will be leading the auditorium Bible study. These will also be live streamed. And tonight, beautiful weather. Just think warm, and it's going to be fine. Trunk or treat is tonight after evening worship services. Food will be prepared in advance, individually wrapped and handed out. Tables will be set up outside to ensure we maintain proper distancing as we fellowship. We ask that cars with treats for the kids in the trunks, uh, not kids in the trunks, but the treats in the trunks, uh, park along the northwest corner of the parking lot, and that will allow those who cannot stay to easily exit after worship services this evening. And please check with Sue or Rachel with any questions. Be sure to pick up the October issue of Seeking the Old Paths. You'll find that at both entrances. Uh, there's several timely articles addressing issues that we're facing relative to God's word, so please take a look at those. Greenmount Road has a gospel meeting scheduled for November 1st through the 3rd, so that begins next Sunday, with Paul Sane speaking. The theme for this meeting is accepting the challenge before us. If you'd like to participate in the Bears for Kids program, please check with Beverly or Jan Myers. They're still looking for volunteers. Sharon Bachman has a new address listed in the bulletin. I'm not going to give that out at this time, so please check the bulletin for that. And this is temporary as she's looking forward to moving again in March or April. You know, I don't know if it's maybe every five or six months she enjoys doing this. <laughs> Daylight savings time ends on November 1st, so next week be sure to set your clocks back one hour. Please check the bulletin for a complete listing of those needing our prayers at this time. I do have some updates. Krista Lucas broke her ankle in three places. Frank said her surgeon not only specializes in ankles, but was one of the doctors for the U.S. ski team, and the doctor thinks that Krista will still be able to represent our country in the upcoming 2022 Beijing Games. So, so she's in the hands of the best, so uh, please remember to pray for Krista. Charles and Betty Joe, let me know that Randy, uh, their son's infection in his foot was worse than expected. He was admitted to the hospital last week, and he had surgery this morning. And that surgery went well. He's already been through that. They're awaiting the results of the biopsy to find out what's going to be required going forward. But it is a serious condition, so please remember Randy in your prayers. Penny Leibner was released from the hospital on Friday and is home recovering from surgery, so that's good news. Please remember Penny. And Gloria Browning has upcoming hip replacement surgery on December 8th. She said it's no big deal, uh, but please remember Gloria in your prayers as well. Also, I would like for you to please check out the bulletin. It has some information for our preliminary plans for work emphasis for 2021, as well as uh, some different budget items for 2021. And if you have any suggestions or thoughts, please let us know so that we can be sure to address that for the upcoming 2021 budget. With that, we'll begin with our scripture reading. Again, that scripture reading is John chapter 6, verses 66 through 69. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. 
Thank you, John. Our first song this morning would be Let Every Heart Rejoice and Sing. Before we go to God in prayer, let's sing To God Be the Glory, after the song be led in prayer by Brother Joe.
Will you follow along in prayer with me? Dear Heavenly Father, how truly grateful we are for each and every moment of life which you allow us to have here upon this earth. We pray, Father, that we continue to uh, redeem the time, that we continue to uh, be conscious of our limited lifespan and how quickly it goes, and help us to maintain our focus on service to you in accordance with your will. Father, we're so very grateful for all the many blessings which you've showered down upon us, for the food that we eat, the clothing we have, the shelter we enjoy, the many luxuries which you have allowed us to have to make our lives a little bit more comfortable. And we pray, Father, that uh, we always remember that all good things come from you, both physically and spiritually. Father, there are a few this time that um, especially we would like to pray for. We're very mindful of our sister, Krista, and we ask that you be with her as she tries to recover and as she uh, is looking forward to um, uh, surgery. We pray that you help her to endure the challenges that she will face and be with the doctors that are tending to her. We're also mindful of Randy Smith and his ongoing issues, and we pray, Father, that you, um, if it's your will, you allow him to recover and help the doctors to uh, get this infection under control and help him to uh, regain a portion of his health. We're thankful for uh, the answered prayers on behalf of Penny, and we ask that you continue to be with her as she recovers from her recent surgery, help her to gain strength and uh, continue along that path. And we're also mindful of our sister Gloria as she is um, facing surgery, and we pray, Father, that you help uh, each and every one, uh, as it's in accordance with your will, um, to either endure the challenges which they face or to recover. Father, we're so thankful for this congregation. We're thankful for Brother Joey and Brother Jerry as they continue their oversight here. We pray that they continue to exercise that oversight with wisdom in accordance with your will and the scripture. And we pray that you bless them for their efforts. As we go throughout the remainder of our time here together this morning, help us to keep our minds focused on you and service to you. Help us to be diligently participating in the sermon through um, listening, through making application into our own lives of the things that we read, and help us to check those things against the scripture. Father, as we sing, help us to evaluate the words that we are singing and make sure that we are uh, singing them in truth, that we are uh, ensuring that we hold up to the things that we say we are doing in our songs, and help us, Father, again, to check those. We also ask that you be with us as we partake of the Lord's Supper, and as we give back, help us to do those things in a right mind. Most of all, Father, we're thankful for Jesus. We're thankful for the sacrifice that he made on our behalf so that our sins might be forgiven. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Thank you, Joe. Our song of encouragement after Brother Jerry's lesson will be, I am resolved. And before his message this morning, let's sing, Unto Thee, O Lord, and we please stand as we sing the song. <coughs> Unto Thee, O Lord, Unto thee, o Lord. do I lift up my soul.
Will you please be seated? If you will turn to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Whenever we study any book of the Bible, uh, the first thing that we need to do, if possible, is to figure out what the purpose of that book is. Uh, Unless we understand the purpose of that book, it's probably going to be difficult or next to impossible to understand everything in that book. And so as we understand the purpose of a book, and as as we read and study through that book, we always have in the back of our mind remembering what the purpose of that book is. And so when we read something in that book, okay, how does this relate to the purpose of Of that book. We have mentioned several times in studying the book of John that we don't have to guess, we don't have to assume, uh, we don't have to speculate what the purpose of this book. In John chapter 20, verse 30 through 31, and many other signs. Truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life in his name. Now, when you look at those two verses, let me suggest to you there is a threefold purpose. Of this book. The book was written to give forth proof in reference to who Jesus is. Uh, if, if, you're going to, if you're going to get a clear picture of who Jesus really is, this no doubt is the best book to study because that's what the book is focusing on that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of of God. This book is written to produce faith or to produce, as the passage says, belief. And remember that faith, that belief, is based upon evidence. You can't have faith, you can't have belief uh, unless there is evidence. And so as you go through the book, you will see proof of who Jesus is. That proof then produces faith. You know, we talk about Romans 10 and verse 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Uh, Of course, there is evidence, there is proof who Jesus is. And so the book of John is written to produce faith. But then number three suggests it is written to provide life. To provide life. And that is to provide spiritual life. One of the key words in the book of John is the word life. Turn to John chapter 6. Understanding here the reason, the purpose of the book. Look at John chapter 6. In John chapter 6, the word life appears 11 times. In John chapter 6, there are 71 verses. And so the word life, as we will note, is a very significant word 
in the book of John, and especially here in John chapter 6. As you look at John chapter 6, there are four main sections in that chapter. Four main sections. We see, first of all, in John chapter 6, verse 1 through 15, we see Jesus works a miracle. What does he do? Well, you read about the feeding of the 5,000. Now think about that. The feeding of the 5,000. And so they needed something to eat for their physical life. Now, tragically, as you read through that and continue in John chapter 6, we see that some were more interested in the physical food that they needed for physical life than the spiritual food that they needed for their spiritual life. But in John 6, verse 1 through 15, is the working of a miracle, the feeding of the 5,000. Then in verse 16 through 21, Jesus, again, shows his power as he walks on the water. Walks on the water. Now, just as the miracle in verses 1 through 15, so it is with verses 16 through 21, Jesus is demonstrating his power. His power. Now we get to verse 22 through 59. And we have the word being preached there by Jesus in reference to the bread of life. The bread of life. And then in verse 60 through verse 71, we see what the people did in response to this message that they just heard on the bread of life. The people were, were thinking, okay, Moses provided manna from heaven for us. Jesus said Moses did not. God provided that food for you. God provided the manna from heaven for you. They needed that which came from heaven for their physical life. Jesus then emphasizes the fact that I am the bread of life. John chapter 6 and verse 35. Seven times in John chapter 6. There is a reference to Jesus being the one that has come down from heaven. You see a significance there. The manna that the people of God needed in times past came from heaven, came from God for their physical being. And Jesus is emphasizing, as you read through that sermon that he preached there, that I have come down from heaven. I am the bread of life. I am what you need in reference to spiritual life. And that's what he's emphasizing. In verse 33... In verse 38, in verse 41, verse 42, verse 50, verse 51, and verse 58. 
those seven verses all reference to the fact that he has come down from heaven. And so again emphasizing the power that he has to provide for man what they need. In this chapter in John chapter 6, we have the first of the seven I am's. Seven times in the book of John, Jesus said, I am. Here in John chapter 6, verse 33, excuse me, verse 35, he says, I am the bread of life. Now, I want to look and just, just briefly mention these six other descriptions that Jesus makes in reference to himself, where he says, I am. In John chapter 8 and verse 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Now, as you look at each one of these descriptions, notice the significance of these descriptions in reference to the need or the needs of man. I'm the bread of life. See, we, we, need, we need that spiritual bread in order to be able to have spiritual life. I am the light of the world, John 8, 12. Then in John chapter 10, verse 7 through 9, and Jesus says, I am the door. We know what a door, we talk about a means of entrance into. I am the door. Okay? Then in John chapter 10 and verse 10 through 14, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. A shepherd leads, guides, protects. And so you see, what we need all that, provides. And that's what Jesus is saying, that I am. And so I'm the good shepherd. In John chapter 11 and verse 25, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Again, notice the word life. But it's on the resurrection. And so if we're going to have spiritual life, there has to be a resurrection. And we know that's the case in reference to at the end of time, if we're to have eternal life, and that's what Jesus has come to provide for us, I have come that you might have life, and that you might have it more abundantly, John 10 and verse 10. And so Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And then in John 14 and verse 6, probably the one that we're most familiar with, or we hear more, more often, where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. And so you need to come to the Father. But Jesus says, the only way to do that is through me. Because he said, I am the way, the truth, the life. Notice the definite article, the. He does not say there, I am a way, a truth, a life. I'm not one of many. I'm not one of many. But it says, I am the way. The ideal there is, I am the one and only. There's no other way. I am the one and only truth. I am the one and only life. I am. And then in John 15, 
In verse 1, the seventh of the seven I am's, Jesus says, I am the vine. And you remember the parable of the vine and the branches. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. When you study that parable, the idea I'm the vine, I'm the very source of life for you. And as long as you are, in a sense, connected to me, you're going to have life. Now, sometimes... There are those who do not remain connected to the Lord. And therefore, in the parable, it states that the branches will be severed. The branches will be cut off because no longer producing fruit. And thus, he says, be burned. I said, when you look at these seven descriptions that Jesus gives of himself, I am. You find in these seven descriptions that which man needs. And so Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the solution. And so as he emphasizes here in John chapter 6 and verse 22 through 59, in this sermon, I'm the bread of life. I'm the bread of life. Well, when Jesus began to, in more detail, explain that to the people on that occasion, And even stating to them that they had to eat his flesh and drink of his blood. They started to, now, whoa, 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 back up here. How can that be? How can that be? And in verse 60, of John chapter 6, the Bible says that when they heard those things that Jesus was saying along that line, they said that this is a, this, this is a hard saying. How can we eat of his flesh? How can we drink of his blood? Well, the problem was they were looking at what Jesus was teaching here in the physical area. They thought he was actually saying that they physically had to eat of his flesh. That they physically had to eat or drink, if you will, of his blood. But Jesus was not talking about physically doing that, but he's talking about from a spiritual standpoint, were they to do that. And that meant, for example, here in John chapter 6. Notice these words in verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. When I talk about the eating of the flesh and the drinking of the blood, I'm not talking about. That which is in the physical realm. I'm not talking about that. The words, notice, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I'm the source of the life that you need from a spiritual standpoint. And you can't have it without me. Now, understand, please, that the words that I speak, they are that which provide or produces life. And so if you're going to have life, yes, there has to be the consuming of me, not in the physical sense, but the consuming of the Word 
that I am teaching, that I am speaking. And that's what that means. Yet when they heard that, they said, this, this doesn't make any sense. And we can't do that. And so the Lord is asking of us something that is too difficult for us to do. Now, beginning in verse 60, down through the end of the chapter, verse 71, and especially the first part of that, we have what the people did in reference to or in response to the message that they just heard about the bread of life. Notice these words. From that time, King James says, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. What was their response to what Jesus had just been teaching? And remember, they're viewing it as a hard saying. This is just too hard. We really can't understand all this, and we really basically don't want to understand it. And so they, notice, went away and walked no more with him. Well, they heard what Jesus preached on this occasion. They had a choice to make. And they made that choice. And they went away. They walked no more with him. Notice it says that many of his disciples... Walked no more with him. That means that some of his disciples did not go away. Some of his disciples were walking, or words, they continued to walk with him. Notice also, please, that when Jesus heard what the people were saying and what they eventually did, now notice, it is by choice. This did not just happen. It's by choice. It was their choice. He did not change his message in any shape or form. He didn't start saying, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, come back here, come back, come back here. Let, let me start over on this. Let me change something here. Because I don't want you to leave me. I don't want you to walk away from me. I am the source of everything that you need. He didn't change. He didn't compromise his message in any shape or form. He didn't conform his message to what he thought that they wanted to hear. That didn't happen. Here's the way it is. You know, there are many verses in the Bible that we, we could call, and rightfully so, joyful verses. Or is there verses that encourage us, that 
build us up, that lifts us up, that, that just causes us to have great joy. And certainly, certainly is that true in reference to the, the many of the promises of God. Many joyful verses. But also, there are some verses in the Bible that we could describe as being sad verses. And here's one. This is not just anyone that went away. This is not just anyone that was walking no more with the Lord. These were disciples, followers of the Lord. But they went away and walked no more with Him. Like John 5, verse 40, where He says, And ye will not come unto Me that you might have life. Isn't that sad? Here I am. I'm able to give you life. But you choose not to come to me. These people, many of these people, of course, as, he, as we read here, they had chosen to come and to walk with the Lord. Again, that was a choice they made. It was not something the Lord made them do. It was a choice they made. And now they make a choice to walk no more with Him. When you look at the passage here, how does the Lord view this? In other words, some of His disciples went away, they walked no more with him. How does he view this? How does he feel about this? He's just saying, oh, well, that's okay. Notice the very next verse. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? This is not just an event. That's happening. When many disciples chose to walk no more with him, here's how the Lord viewed that. You're going away. You are going away from me. Now, we know and understand that at the last great day, as we've discussed lately, there's going to be one of two verdicts handed down. To some, he will say, well done, thy good and faithful servant, enter. With others, and with many, he's going to say, depart from me. That is the Lord saying to those people, get away. But the reason he's saying that is because of the choice that they made in their life. Not to walk with him. Tragically, some did not even choose to begin to walk with him. Others chose to begin to walk with the Lord, but then they did not continue 
to walk with the Lord. And he says, depart from me. I never knew you. But these people here, they are choosing to hear those very words. Oh, yes, they can choose to walk away, which they did. Walk no more with him, okay? But one day, they're going to hear the words, depart from me. And that's forever. Walk no more. To choose not to walk with the Lord. These are not people that are atheists. These are not people that don't care or not even heard about the Lord. These are people that were disciples of the Lord. And something comes up they didn't like to hear. And so they said, this is enough. You do realize and do you understand that happens even sometimes today. That people make that same choice. And sometimes they hear something. I mean, it's truth. They hear it. They don't like it. And so they walk away. And when they walk away, who are they benefiting when they walk away, who are they benefiting? When they choose not to walk with the Lord or choose not to continue to walk with the Lord, who are they benefiting? That's only one. It's not themselves. It's not other people. It's not the Lord. And we know who it is. It's the devil. It's the devil. We will continue this study this evening. Especially focusing on the choice that these people made. And how many times a day that same choice is made and we'll look at what the cost of that is. We'll look at some of the causes of that even today. Jesus came that we might have life that we might have it more abundantly. Not only have spiritual life while we live physically here in this world, on this earth, but also to have life eternal. This morning, as Brother Joey is about to lead us in this song, a song of encouragement. If you're here this morning, you have not yet obeyed the gospel. You have not yet made that decision, you have not chosen to walk with the Lord, the time to begin is now. Come believing in the Lord, John 8, 24. Repenting of one's sins, Luke 13, 3. Confessing Jesus, acknowledging Him as the Christ, the Son of the living God, as Peter states here in John chapter 6. And being baptized being immersed in water for the mission of our sins. If you need to come this morning for that reason, or you need to come as a child of God, because you have stopped walking with the Lord, you know what that means? If we do not continue to walk with the Lord, that means we walk with Him no more. Just as we have a, had a choice to come to the Lord and to begin walking with Him, just as we had a choice not to continue to walk with the Lord, which some certainly have made, we also have a choice 
And we can choose to come back and to begin walking with the Lord again. Let that be your need. We encourage you to do what needs to be done as together we stand and as we sing. Please be seated. We, before we remember our Lord and Savior, let's sing Night with Evan Pinion.
bow with me. Well, gracious and loving Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this time that we could gather here around that table to remember our Lord and Savior and the sacrifice he made on our behalf. Heavenly Father, as we partake of this uh, bread, which to us as Christians represents Christ's body, let us do so in a manner well pleasing in thy sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you for this cup, this symbol of your son's blood that was shed on the cross for our sins. Lord, as we take this emblem, let, let us take it in a manner which is pleasing in your sight. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Separate and apart from the Lord's Supper, we need to fulfill another commandment that Jesus gave to us, and that is to give. Would you bow with me? Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for all the blessings of this life. It, we know everything comes from you. The things that we need to, for our comfort and living in this, this world that, as we pass through all come from you. Heavenly Father, help us at this time to give back so that the work of thy church can continue on. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our final song this morning will be when all of God's singers get home. Will you please stand as we sing the song? After this song, we'll be led in prayer by Brother David. I want to thank Jerry for that fine lesson. Look forward to the continuance of that tonight at 5 p.m. And Rachel assures me that 75 and sunny by 6 p.m. <laughs> what a song of delight in a city so bright. Let us pray. Father, we're so thankful for all of those that came out to 
worship with us this morning. We pray, Father, that our service was edifying to everyone in attendance, and we pray, Father, it was carried out in a manner that's according to thy word. Well, Father, we're so thankful for all the brothers who participated in our worship service this morning. We're thankful for their individual uh, abilities, and we're thankful for their willingness to serve. We're thankful for Brother Jerry and the message that he presented to us this morning, Father. We pray that we will continue to study upon the principles of his lesson so we can obtain more knowledge of that word, and also, Father, just so we can go out and, and um, be able to teach others. Uh, Father, we ask that you continue to please be with those who uh, were listed earlier, who are on our sick list. We uh, pray that um, you will comfort them and that you will help them get back to their natural health. And Father, as we dismiss and uh, head out into the world, we pray, Father, that you will go with us and watch over us, guide, guard, and protect us. Through Christ we pray. Amen.